Hello, our dear baby, darling Princess Rena. Hi, how are you? Hello there. Hello, it's Wednesday night. Hello, Rhonda, Herring, Elder Levi, and Elder Dawn Jones. We see you, Elder Rochelle Taylor, Alyssa Braddocks. God bless you guys. How you doing? Come on in. Hello, B. Huey and Eddie Huey. God bless you guys. You want to share it? That's what I'm doing right now. That's what you're doing. Hello, Linda Tripp. Elder okay. Stephen Taylor. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, Alexandria Jones. Happy Wednesday. Glory be to God. How's everybody doing tonight? Text text people. Say jump on. Jump on Facebook Live. Jump on right now. Text people. Inbox people. Tell them. Go ahead and like and share it. Hello, Marsha Wright. Miss Marsha, God bless you. Uh, inbox people. Let people know that uh, service is going to start here. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Get everybody gathered round, gathered round. Hey, Jason, Minister Jason Williams. God bless you. Elder Robert Carr. Hello, hello. Hey, Kyla Foot. Carolyn Moss. God bless you guys. Come on in, come on in, come on in, gather around, gather around. Let people know. Let people know. Text them, inbox them, like and share it. Thank you, honey. God, come on in. Greet everybody. Tell them it's so good to see you on a Wednesday night. Amen. Tell them it's so good to see you on a Wednesday night. It is so good to see you on a Wednesday night. It's so good to see you on a Wednesday night. So good to see you on a Wednesday night. Glory be to God. Let somebody know. It's good to see ya. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to know how many people ready for some revelation tonight. Amen. I want to know how many people are ready for some revelation tonight. Did you come hungry? Did you come ready for some revelation word of God tonight? Yep, let somebody know. Yeah, it is good to see you guys. Hi, Mariah Wigner. Hey. God bless you. Henry Robinson, how you doing? Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. How many people are ready for some revelation tonight? Get your Bibles, get your Bibles. Glory be to God. Maybe it's maybe your Bible is on your phone. Maybe it's on your tablet, but you, boy, you want to be ready for this tonight. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. How many people got a chance to watch the um, prayer, prayer session this morning? We had a morning prayer session. We had a Wednesday morning prayer session. And if you didn't get a chance to, it's uploaded on YouTube. It's also on our Facebook page and Empowering Word Christian Center's Facebook page. So praise God. If you didn't get a chance to join us this morning, you can go back and listen to that because we are praying some wonderful things and praying prophetically and praying over you and your family. And so glory be to God. Um, this is what we're going to do. How about we, how about wherever you are, wherever you are, let's worship the Lord for a moment. Just lift your hands. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah. Lord God, we worship you. Just we lift your hands. You, Just lift your hands toward heaven. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. You are wonderful. You are awesome, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We bless you and praise you. We love you, Lord God. Come on, just lift your hands wherever you are. Just, just, just love on them for a moment. Just, Father, we love you. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you loved us before we could even love you. We receive your love and grace tonight. We receive the blessing. We receive your word. We receive your power. Thank you for opening our eyes to see what you want us to see and our ears to hear. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, Angel and Mary and Melina. God bless you guys. Good How you guys doing? Glory be to God. Jesus. All right. Well, let's jump in this. Um, we want to give you a couple announcements. It's Holy Week, so we are doing seven days of prayer and fasting. We are doing seven days of prayer and fasting. We started on Monday and um, we are going through the end of service uh, this coming Sunday, which is Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. So um, that is this Sunday. So we're fasting. So fast something. Yes. Maybe it's a meal a day or uh, maybe it's something that you can do whatever it is, um, fast, do something uh, to where you're giving something up. Maybe you're doing something differently that you normally do, break up the routine. And um, if you are wondering what we're doing, uh, we, we decided to do the Daniel fast uh, for this seven days, and um, which is much different than we would normally do. So we're, we're the purpose of fasting, remember, is to remove unbelief, to eliminate unbelief. So that's what we're doing so that we can walk and really receive the word of God and build our faith so that we can demonstrate the power of God the way we're supposed to be demonstrating it so we can have authority and walk in our righteousness and walk in the way God wants us to walk in. Hello, Margaret. God bless you. Good evening. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing. We're in our seven days of fasting. So um, tomorrow is the men's prayer conference call. We had a men's prayer conference call on Monday, and this is the second men's prayer conference call this week. It is tomorrow at 7 a.m. Tomorrow at 7 a.m. So men, any men out there, calling all men, any men out there, jump on the men's prayer conference call yes. tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Men out there, jump on the, tell, wives, 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 tell your man to jump on the prayer conference yes. call tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. And then ladies, the prayer conference call for the women is going to be Friday. Good yes. Friday. It's going to be good Friday. So you want to make sure you jump on that. Remember. And then on Saturday morning at 7 a.m., we both will be back here on Facebook Live. Yes. Uh, praying together, uh, much like we did this morning. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing we'll be doing that again, and then we'll see you Sunday Resurrection Sunday, um, as we'll be live on YouTube and uh, Facebook Live as well. 
Um, the Facebook Live, we upload those to YouTube. So you can get those and you can share those. Hello, Benita, Marie Williams. God bless you. God bless you. So um, I, um, we are, we're having church. This is Empowering Word Christian Center's midweek service. And we, we are going to continue to have church just like we would normally have church yes. if we were in gathered. And one of the things that we have at church is we believe in tithe and offering. We do believe in tithe and offering. We believe that the tithe is the tenth and it's holy before God. We believe that the purpose of giving the tithe is to acknowledge that you are blessed. Because the word of God says that the blessing of Abraham came upon us through Jesus Christ. And you know, in Proverbs chapter 10, if you go there quickly, that God wants you to walk in the blessing. Say, Amen. God wants me to walk in the blessing. God wants us to walk in the blessing. Yes. Hello, Sierra Greg. God wants you to walk in the blessing. It says, in Proverbs 10, 22, it says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and adds no sorrow. In other words, the blessing will bring wealth without painful toil. That's another translation mm, says. So God true. wants you to be wealthy so that you can do everything he's called you to do. See, money is not evil. The love of it is evil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Money in itself can't be evil. It can't. Mm -hmm. But if you're bound by the spirit of mammon, then that's when you become in love with it and you make it an idol but right. god you know you can be rich and wealthy at the same time abraham was rich mm -hmm, and wealthy mm -hmm. uh isaac was rich and uh you can be rich and what i'm saying is you can be rich and in faith you can That's be right. wealthy in faith abraham was a man of faith but he was wealthy at the same time Amen. isaac and jacob they were men of faith but wealthy at the same time so god wants you to be wealthy and in faith they're they're both doable they are not opposites if they were opposites, heaven would not have be so rich. That's right. Streets of gold. Mm, that's good. It's the holiest place you can get to, yet it's the wealthiest place you can get to. So um, don't believe any lie from the devil that God wants you poor. God don't want you to be broke. He wants you to be walking in the blessing. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. So when you give, know that you are being obedient to the Lord and that that obedience and that faithfulness causes you to walk in what he's already provided. Amen. 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 I declare over you and your household Thank that you, God Lord. provides over all your need according to his riches and glory. Yes. I declare that you have wealth transfer and yes. that you have uh, debt cancellation, supernatural yes. debt yes, cancellation. Yes, yes. I declare wealth. I declare multiple streams of income. Yes. In Jesus' in mighty Jesus name, name, I declare the grace of God yes. and that the protection of God upon you and you are going to come out of this season. It may be famine in the world, but you will have wealth and riches in your house yes. according to the word of God. In yes. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, Elijah. God bless you. And uh, praise God. Now, we're going to go into this. Church part six. Now, if you, we want to welcome our first time visitors. If yes. you're here for the very first time, we know that you're not here by accident, but you're here on purpose for God's purpose. So yes. yay, first time visitors. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Praise God. Welcome our first time visitors. And we want you to like and share this. And um, this is part six. Oh, hello, Kenya. Hello, Kenya. Hello, God bless Kenya. you. Hello, Kenya. We um, love our brothers and sisters in Christ in Kenya, Africa. Now, this is part six of the series Church. If you've missed any of it, go back and listen to it. Go back and listen to it. There's part one, two, three, four, and five. And then tonight we are going into part six. It's called Church. And we're going to start off with this. And... Honey, can you read Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 19? We're going to start there. Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, 13 through 19. Matthew 16, starting at verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am, the Son of Man am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, 
and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise God. Hello, Corey. Hey, good evening, Carolyn Berry. God bless you guys. Now listen, she just read that. And so we've been using that as a foundation. That's the first time you see the word church in scripture. That's the first time you see the word church. And so there's something called the uh, law of first mention. Mm -hmm. And so in that, he's talking about his people. He's talking about his people. You are the church. Say, I am the church. I am the church. Okay. So he's talking about his people. Um. Is Pat on? Pat, uh, Walter, God bless you. Hello, hello, how are you? Um, but he says, you are the church. That's who you are. And so in that, he says, he says, um, Peter, Simon, Simon was his name. He said, you are the Christ. You are the Christ. And he says, you are the son of the living God. Now that word Christ means the anointed one. Yes, yes. And yes. his anointing. Yes. And you can read about the anointing. You can see that in Isaiah 10, 27. And you can see that also in Isaiah 61. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. for he has anointed me. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the anointing is to remove burdens and destroy yokes. The purpose of the anointing is not so that people can feel good and look good or anything like that. It may make you feel good, but the purpose of the anointing is to remove burdens and destroy yokes. So God is saying, Jesus is saying right there that I'm going to build my church on the anointing, on the fact of removing burdens and destroying yokes. That's Amen. what he's going to build the church on. So he's, he's wanting you and I to walk in his burden removing yoke destroying anointing he is not wanting you just to have a religious life he's wanting you to walk in the burden removing yoke destroying anointing power of god hello Amen. latoria shaw god bless you god bless now you. in that he says listen he says that's what i'm going to build my church on and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church or my people. In other words, that's what he's saying. So it's not that the gates of hell are coming against you. It's you coming against the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. Remember, in the word of God, they would put up gates. Anybody that puts up gates wants to keep something out or keep someone out. Hell has put up gates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... And so this is a powerful revelation and it has to do with the seven kingdoms, the seven cultures of the world. But hell has put up gates. Remember, Satan is the God of this world. And so he puts up gates. God's people are supposed to storm the gates and infiltrate the world system. That's what you were designed to do. That's what Jesus did. Amen. He infiltrated the world system. Remember, when he cast out the demons from the man and put them into the pigs... The people tried to get him out of the town. Why? Because he disrupted yes. their community. He disrupted their whole system. The church, the people of God, were designed to disrupt the world system. Yes. yes. That's what yes. you were designed yes. to do. That's why the word of God says, do not be conformed to this, this world, world. but be right. transformed by the renewing of your mind 
When you do that, you'll be able to prove what is that good, perfect, uh, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Yes. So once you and I are no longer conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of my, our mind, then we can walk in the perfect will of God, the acceptable will of God, the good will of God. All of we can walk in the will of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, in this, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He gives you the keys. Keys represent authority. So God is wanting his church to have the authority in the land. That's the right. people of God are supposed to have the authority in the earth. Hello, Mary Puckett, Bolden. God bless you. God bless you. Remember, Adam was given all authority. He was given all authority. He named all the animals, everything. He, he told Adam, listen, be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth, fill it, and, and have dominion. He said, let us make man in our image and our likeness to have dominion. So God wants you to have dominion. And so that authority, Jesus Christ came back and gave you the authority. He paid the ultimate price so that you and I would be able to walk in that authority. In fact, he told his disciples, he said, listen, um, I give you authority. You shall trample upon you know, snakes and scorpions, scorpions and all of that stuff. And by, yep, yep. All, all, no, nothing by means shall hurt you. Yes. So he's given you and I authority. Amen. He says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. That's right. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And another translation says, whatever you allow on earth yes. shall be allowed. God will allow. And yeah. whatever you don't allow on earth, yeah. God will not allow. So in this, Jesus is saying the authority is in your hand. So if crazy things happen on the earth, it's because you haven't taken your authority. Come on, somebody. Are you mm -hmm. hearing what I'm saying? So what we see going on in the world is basically a manifestation of the church's inability to grab and take their authority. And the reason why the church hasn't taken their authority is because of immaturity. Mm -hmm. You can't have authority Un, uh, with immaturity. Mm, have you ever seen really someone that is immature but have lots of power and yes, authority? Lord. They are an accident going, going somewhere, somewhere to happen. Are you hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes, you yes. you cannot have a child or an immature person mm -hmm. in authority because what happens is it brings it brings trouble. It brings chaos. Mm -hmm. Well, what's happened is, is the church has not risen to the place of a maturity. They have not risen to the place of maturity. They're still on the elementary things, mm -hmm. elementary things, mm -hmm. go to church, mm -hmm. tithe, mm -hmm. you know, walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. Elementary things. Mm -hmm. See, we should be past the elementary things mm -hmm. and we should be moving on to the book of Acts things. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen to that. Mm -hmm. We should be past the elementary things. Don't cuss folks out. Yeah. You know, don't, don't, don't be involved in worldly craziness. Yeah. You know, we have to get past the elementary things. Yeah. See, if, if, I, if we have a, um, yeah. Oh, you know what? You got a scripture. Go ahead. Read that. Praise yes, it, it actually says in Hebrews 6 verse 1, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection or maturity, not laying again the foundation. And so then it goes on to talk about the foundation. And so we, as the body of Christ, we're not forgetting our foundation. Yes. But we should be able to move on. And build from and that. And build from that. Glory be to and God. And so when a person doesn't move on from the foundation of uh, the elementary principles of Christ, that's where they start to build up head knowledge. Yes. And like, that's where religion comes that's in. That's where religion comes so, in. So you know Jesus and you know scriptures, yeah. but you still... In the elementary things. The elementary and things. And now you're going to build a whole religion on the elementary, elementary things. things. So you actually go to church and the the pastor is so low on elementary things that all he's doing is teaching you how to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And we should be past that. Yeah. The church should be past that. God never set it up where the man of God teaches you how to, or the man or woman of God, the pastor, teaches you how to be a good person. Because yeah, guess what? Elementary. A lot of good people die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, somebody. A lot of people, good people, don't they say that? Oh, he's a good man. Oh, she's yeah. a good woman. Mm -hmm. hey, they say that all the time. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Are you born again? Are you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Are you part of the family of God or mm -hmm. are you not? Mm -hmm. Those are only the two classes of people. Those that are part of the family of God and those that are not. That's mm -hmm. really it, folks. Mm -hmm. So there is no good in this because the world will tell you there's good people. Mm -hmm. And so what has happened is the church has been reduced to teaching people how to be a good person. You mean to tell me somebody's got to teach you not to steal? Come on. You mean to tell me somebody's got to teach you? That, that that line is wrong? You mean to tell me at this juncture in the game, somebody's got to teach you that, hey, you shouldn't go out and be shacked up? Right, Come right, on, somebody. Right, right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have to move beyond that stuff yeah. and say, okay, now we can step into the works that Jesus did. John 14, 12. He said, the, if you believe in me, go ahead and read that, honey. He says, if you believe in me, the works that I do, glory be to God, right here, John chapter 14, verse 12. Hello, Tiffany Pearson, God bless you. Good evening. John 14, 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Why did he say greater works? Because Jesus only had three and a half years of ministry. You have your whole lifetime. Mm. He he. He had an expiration date because he had to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. So that's why he said greater works. So the works that he did, what were the works that he did? The works that he did was laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. Mm -hmm. The works that he did were prophesying and declaring the word of God. The mm -hmm. works that he did was revealing truth to people, mm -hmm. preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The works that he did came with signs, wonders, and miracles. Mm -hmm. The works that he did defied the natural laws and operated in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. The church needs to move into the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Amen. you are a spirit first. Yes, yes, yes. You live in a body yes, yes. and you possess a soul. Your Amen. soul is your mind, emotions, and will. So when you move beyond those elementary things, yes. oh, I shouldn't go around and, and what a bad attitude. Well, of course, the reason why the church is not raising dead folk and laying hands on the sick and seeing the recover, because you got church folk walking around with a bad attitude. Hey, Come on, we got to move beyond that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Come on. And we got to move closer to the Lord. So the church has been reduced. And that's why we see the things happening in the world, because of the reduction of the church when it comes to its power and authority. All yeah. right. Yep. Now. In this, because you, your church, you know, some of you guys are listening to us right now and you go to different churches and your churches might do great humanitarian things. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Praise God. But it should not stop there. See, your church can give out food, but can they lay hands on the sick and see them recover? Can they cast out devils? Can they do the actual right. works that oh, Jesus that's right. that's did? Right. See, right. God never created the body of Christ to be humanitarian. That's right. There are worldly people right now that are great humanitarians. That's right. What separates the church from them? Right, right. It has to be the glory and power of God. That's Somebody right. say amen to that. Amen. It has to be the supernatural. It has to be something that you can do amen. that they can't do. Amen, amen. That's how God is differentiating those who believe. Amen. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, um, God did not, you know, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who believes in him shall have life and life everlasting, right? Mm -hmm. Well, all they have to do is believe. Amen. He also said in John 14, 12, those that believe the works that I do. So you can't say, well, I believe um, only to get to a place that you've never even been to. You've never been to heaven before. Wow. See, that's called religion. Well, I don't believe that I could do the works of Jesus. That's called religion. That's called unbelief, all right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we understand what we're talking about. Now, that is the church, and the definition of the word church has a dual meaning. It means the primary meaning is the uh, Greek word ekklesia or the called out ones or God's people. That's the primary uh, 
definition. The secondary uh, definition includes the organization, the building, the structure, the denomination. You drive down the street and you say, hey, look at that church. You know, you're not talking about the people. You're talking about that organization, that denomination, whatever. So-and-so goes to that church. Yeah. You're not talking about the people. You're talking about the denomination, the structure, the organization. So it's a dual meaning. The first meaning is ecclesia. means you. You are the church if you're yeah. born again. The second meaning is the assembly that you're part of, okay? Yeah. Now, the question is, should the church belong to a church? Meaning you. Should you belong to a church? And I talked about this a little bit on Sunday. Yes. I'm going to say it again. Yes. In fact, the word of God says in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Honey, can you read that? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. You know that, uh, you know, you, you have people that have so much unbelief in them, they don't even believe that you're supposed to belong to an assembly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Uh, what does it say, honey? 11 Ephesians, through 16. Ephesians chapter 4. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to be a perfect man to the measure of the stature of Christ. Now, see, he says he gave some apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. Those are the fivefold ministries. Mm -hmm. Those are the people. Those are the leaders of the body of Christ that are called to bring forth the word of God. Um, everybody else is called to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. They're the kings. And so we don't have time to go into that. Those are the people that go out into the world mm -hmm. in different spheres of expertise and bring back the spoils that influence the world. But that's a different mm -hmm. topic. Now, listen. He said, for the equipping of the saints, for the work, work of, of the, the ministry. ministry. See, yes, yes, that's yes. the works. John 14, 12. The yes. works that I do, yes. you shall do. <clears throat> so you should belong to a church so that you can get equipped to actually be like Jesus mm -hmm. and do the things that Jesus did. And he said, so that we become to a perfect man. That doesn't mean that you don't make any mistakes and cross all your T's and dot, dot your I's. Perfect in the New Testament, that word perfect means mature. See, again, we're talking about maturity. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. You can't have the keys of the kingdom and, uh, if you don't have maturity. All right? You can't have the keys of the kingdom if you don't have maturity. Glory be to God. Now, in that, um, Hebrews 10, verse 23, I'm going to read it, and it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has mm. promised is faithful. Mm -hmm. And let us consider one another in order to stir up the love and good works. Amen. The works that I do, That's right. you will do also. John 14, 12, he's talking about those works. All right? He said, how you do that? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So you're supposed to be you sp exactly. that day, yep, that last days, and we're living in the last days. So mm -hmm. you're supposed to be assembling more. You should be in church more. You should be more, whatever's going on, you should be doing that more. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it should be building you up to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hello, James Baker. God bless you. God all right. Bless you. Now, let me ask you this question. Here's another question. Do you get to go to the church of your choosing? The answer is no. You do not get to go to the church of your choosing. And that's why there's so much unbelief in the word of God. I mean, in the body of Christ. There's so much unbelief in the body of Christ. Because people want to go to the church of their choosing. Yes. In Jeremiah, mm. I'm going to read this. In Jeremiah chapter 3, and this is what God was saying to his people. In Jeremiah chapter 3, and verse uh, 14 and 15. Jeremiah chapter 3, 14 and 15. It says, return, O backsliding children, mm. says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you, one from a city and two from the family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. God is saying, I'm going to give you the shepherds. The shepherds are the pastors. Pastors are the leaders of the local church. God is saying, listen, I'm the one that's going to give you the shepherds. 
And so what happens is, is people want to choose what church they go to. And that's why they never fulfill their purpose and destiny. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Hosea says, my people are destroyed mm -hmm. for a lack of knowledge. Yeah. Because the church of your choice is not necessarily if you're not in the if you're not, not in the spirit, spirit and you are not led by the spirit and you're in carnality and yeah. in the flesh yeah. and that's how you're going to build your criteria yeah. on yeah. Yeah. it's not going to help you do and uh the works that God is calling you to do and be who God is calling you to be that's and right. that's called religion yeah. you want to form this called thing called Christianity based on your preference and your liking mm -hmm. and God doesn't go for that he's the Potter, you are the clay. Yeah. You don't get to tell God what you're going to do and what mm. you're not going to do. That is a insubordinate, rebellious child. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. That's and that's good. what we have going on in the body of Christ. In fact, it was prophesied in the word of God mm -hmm. in 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy, go there. And I'm, I'm doing some real good preaching. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy chapter 4 mm -hmm. and look at verse 3. Uh, it says this, for the time will come, he's prophesying right here, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to mm -hmm. hear this type of preaching. The type of preaching I'm giving you, and Pastor Latoya and I are giving you, they won't endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, I, I want to hear this. I want this. Mm -hmm. I want the church to look like that. I want it to sound like that. They want their own desires because they have itching ears. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong with their ears. They have mm -hmm. itching ears. Mm -hmm. They want, they want, they want. And so they will heap up for themselves teachers. Mm. So now I'm going to create my own teachers. I'm going to get my own pastors. We're going to make up our own leaders, our own mm -hmm. pastors. And will they, they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. What's a fable? A fable is a fictitious story designed to teach a lesson. Write that down. A fable is a fictitious story designed to teach a lesson so the person will be a better person. Mm -hmm. That's what the body of Christ has come to. Mm -hmm. You got teachers in the body of Christ teaching the word of God like it's a fable. Yes, yes, yes. Teaching it like it's a fable. Yes. And he says, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. In other words, he's talking to the pastors. Listen, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to speak the truth, whether they like you or not. You got to declare the Amen. word of God, whether they come in the door or not. And so that's what Empowering Word Christian Center is all about. That's what we're designed to do is empower you with the word of God. We love God enough. We yes, love you yes, enough yes, yes, yes. so that we will uh, teach you the word of God so that you will be empowered. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Now, amen. a pastor or shepherd has the calling and responsibility to do the following. All right? A pastor or shepherd has the calling and responsibility to do the following. Here it is. Equip God's people for the work of the ministry. That means the same works that Jesus did. Amen. That is the whole responsibility for the pastor of the church. He's not supposed to be your best friend. Come on he now. or she is not supposed to be your best friend. The, your road dog, Come on he now. or she is not. See, people try to put expectations on the pastor, yeah. and that's why they get offended. That's right. See, they get offended because oh, they 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 didn't do this with me. They yes, didn't do that yes, with me. Yes. They didn't they didn't answer what I was calling. They yes. didn't do that, and and they didn't know. No, no, no. That pastor is designed to do two things, yes. and that is to equip you yes. to be like Jesus so that yes. you can do exactly what Jesus did. Yes. Now, if they are doing that, your problem is not the pastor. Yes. Your problem is you. That's right. You are offended with the word of God. You're right. expecting the pastor to do something they were never designed to do. Yes, yes, now, yes. I'm preaching real yes, good. This is, this is good preaching right here. And that's why a lot of times... When you have churches like ours and people want religion and they yeah. don't want the truth, yeah. they'll walk out, they'll leave. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Because all oh, the pastor, I, I like this and I like that yeah. and they didn't do that they and they didn't go, play they this. They didn't do they me. didn't do they didn't play this music. They yeah. didn't do this. They didn't do that. Why? All that is just carnal, fleshly offense yes, it is. because you don't want to be like Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
That's right. All of it is just hidden, underlining offense yep. because you refuse to be like Jesus. That's right. You want to embrace religion. That's a form of godliness, yes. but you want to deny the power thereof. Amen. And now you want to change and change the whole direction of the church. Come on. You want to change how they do things. You want to change how they do and all that stuff. All that stuff is called carnality yes. and witchcraft. Yes, it is. Glory be to God. Yes, it is. Now, number two. Come on. The pastor shepherd has the calling and responsibility to do the following. Number one. Is equip God's people for the work of the ministry so yes. you can be like Jesus. Yes, yes, it's yes. amazing that people will complain, but they still can't be like Jesus. Come on. Equip you to fulfill your kingdom assignment on the earth. Those are the two initiatives, the agendas, the assignments that a shepherd has from God. Yes. It's to equip God's people for the work of the ministry, yes. the same work that Jesus did, yes. and equip you to fulfill your kingdom assignment yes. on the earth. Yes. Now, yes, yes. how does a pastor do that? Yes, yes. The pastor does this by giving you the word of God yes, yes, that yes. brings you to maturity. Yes, yes, yes. The pastor is not supposed to give you a bunch of donuts Come on. and a bunch of candy so that you can feel good Come in your on. religious carnality. The pastor is supposed to bring you to the point of maturity. And if you are refusing and fighting that, you are fighting the spirit of God. That's why it said those that are led by the spirit, those are the sons and daughters of God. God is differentiating those that really love him Versus those that want to have some comfortability and a ticket to heaven. On, Hello, now. Paige Poo Brown. God bless you. God Good bless evening. You. Now, how, what am I talking about? Well, go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Look at verse 53 through 68. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you getting some tonight? Amen. Are you getting some tonight? I'm telling you, glory be to God. John chapter 6, look at verse 53 through 68. Praise God. Let me read. Yeah, go ahead and read, honey. Verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna, and are dead, mm. he who eats this bread will live forever. Glory to God. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand this? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this. Oh, 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 we got alarm. We got uh -oh, alarm going off. Uh oh. He just gave them the word of God, mm. but now they want to sit up there and, and complain. complain. Jesus. Breathe that again. When Jesus knew in himself, okay, that's spiritual discernment. That's called the works. That's called spiritual that's discernment. Called that's discernment. one of the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Yep. That your pastor should be teaching you. Come on. And should be equipping you because that's what Jesus did. Yeah. That's why I said a few weeks ago, if you go to a church that is not teaching you the works of Jesus and how you should be operating in those supernatural works, right. you need to leave that church immediately. Yep. Do you know religious people are hit, uh, sitting down in this quarantine right now and all they can think of is going back to their religious, hmm. non-powerful church? Mm. Go ahead and read. People need to be repenting. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, "Do does this offend you?" Oh, uh, there you go. There, there it is. Jesus. <laughs> when you reject truth, Ooh. that's called self righteousness. righteousness. That's called pride. All of a sudden, now you're offended, mm -mm. and now you're gonna judge. 
who the word of God comes from. Mm. See? One thing that stuck out with me is they said it was hard. Mm. Mm -hmm. They said it was hard. They said it was hard. What we're teaching and preaching right now is hard. It sure is. I'm not giving you no candy. We fr we got any candy back there? We ain't got no religious candy. That candy. We ain't got no religious soda. We ain't got none of that. We fresh out. We're going to give you the word of God so that you can be mature. Yep. The only reason why you would resist this, because a person does not want to be mature. They haven't left the elementary discussion and moved on to maturity. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Mm. The words that I speak to you are spirit. Yes. And they are life. Glory to God. But there are some of you who do not believe. What is it? There it is again. I've been talking about it this whole series. Unbelief mm. is the biggest thing against the body of Christ. Unbelief. Unbelief is the biggest enemy to the body of Christ. Yes, In fact, is. remember what the word of God says. Anything that's not a faith is sin. So unbelief will cause a person to walk in self-righteousness, sure will cause will. a person to walk in their good deeds, will cause a person to walk in pride, will cause a person to create their own personal religion, and they'll slap Christianity on it. Yes, that's what unbelief yes, does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, mm. who did not believe, mm. and who would betray him. See? And it wasn't just Judas that betrayed him. Mm. Anybody Jesus. that walked out the door after coming in and saying, I'm partnering with you, that was a betrayer. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, somebody. That's good. Go That's ahead and read good. it. good. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. What did they do? They went back. They said, hey, they wrote a letter. They said, <laughs> Pastor Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be leaving your church because you got this hard message and you're not doing what we want. Pastor Jesus, Ooh. I'm, I'm going to send an email. Pastor Jesus, I, I, I'm, I'm not coming to your church no more because you don't you teaching this stuff and I don't like what you're teaching. Pastor Jesus, I'm going to call them up. We won't be coming. You're going to leave Pastor Jesus' church, yet you can't do nothing that Pastor Jesus is telling you. They went back. They went back. See? Wow. And walked with him no more. That meant they didn't agree. They didn't agree. That walk means agree. That walk with him no more. They did not agree. They wow. wanted to find some leader that's going to give them some religion, make them feel good, make them feel good to their personal liking and preference. And that that will cause a Christian to be spiritually sick and mal malnourished. And that is why we see the things going on in the world as a, in the body of Christ, the way it is, is spiritually sick and malnourished Christians. That's it. Yep. And that represents the church of Ephesus. We yep. talked about it. They left their first love. Then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? Mm. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. See? The only criteria you should make in attending a church, becoming a member, there's one criteria, the word that that pastor preaches. Your criteria should not be, well, I don't like the song list. Mm. Your criteria should not be the music. Your criteria should not be the children's program. Your criteria should not be how the seats are arranged. Your criteria should not be if they got enough bathrooms. Your criteria should not Jesus. be whether you like the carpet. Your criteria Jesus. should not be whether your friends go, Come whether on. your friends don't go, Jesus. whether your family been going for 150 years, whether or not it's, 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 it's whatever. Whether it's not, it's the denomination that you were raised in. Come the on. criteria of you going to a church should be based on, is this preacher preaching the full gospel of the kingdom of the word of God? Is he teaching me 
just what Jesus taught. Is he trying to help me be more like Jesus so that I can fulfill my kingdom assignment? That should be the only criteria. But in this day that we're living in, we have a, we, people have set a whole criteria. Oh, they got a go, great choir over there. Oh, their children's program is wonderful. Oh, it's big and nice oh, and everybody it's, it's, going the over there. It's lit. It's lit. It's, lit. it's on and popping yes. at that church. But the preacher is not giving you the word, word of God, God that's, that's right. going to bring you to maturity. Yet you over there clapping. <laughs> you over there. Oh, ain't this wonderful? You, you are dying spiritually and you'll never fulfill your purpose and destiny at that seeker sensitive, lukewarm, denominational church. You won't be able to do it at that denominational church your parents have been, been in all this long. Why? Because the word of God is what builds faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing and, and hearing by the, the word, word of God. God. And if right. you are not hearing that type of teaching and they are not challenging you to maturity, you will not walk in your authority. Amen. Amen. Now I'm preaching real yes, good right here. Praise yes. be to God. Only way. Those disciples said, and for that reason, like on Shark Tank, I'm out. Come on. When they heard Jesus talk about that, they said, and for that reason, I'm, I'm out. out. They went back. They went back. Backwards. That's exactly what happened. Yep. Now, unbelief, which, see, some people base their church on what they look like. I'm talking about skin. Yeah. That's why Lord. church body of Christ is divided. Yeah. We got people that will never step foot in a particular church because the pastor is black or the yep. pastor is white or whatever. Yep. All of that is carnality. Yep. It's all a trick of the devil. It's a trick of the devil. It sure is. Unbelief, which creates religion, rejects maturity. Yep. You can have no authority without maturity. That's right. The reason why there is so much unbelief in religion in the body of Christ is people support leaders that cater to faithless teaching. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What did it say? It said that they heaped up teachers, teachers. for themselves. Yep. Sure are you did. hearing me today? It sure did. Now, we are talking about the seven churches. Remember, the seven churches represent seven types of spirits that are on churches. So if you look out your window and you can see a church, there is a spirit on that church. If you go to a church, there is a spirit on that church. They are seven types of spirits. And if there's seven types of spirits on the churches, they are seven types of spirits on people hmm. because we are the church. And so in that, Jesus said, let he who have ears to hear, touch your ears. Do you have ears to hear? Do you have ears to hear? Amen. How come your church ain't never taught this right now? Amen. Do you have ears to hear? Hello, Doris Royce. God bless you. Amen. Do you have ears to hear? He said, let he who has ears to hear, hear what, the, uh, what Jesus the Christ is saying to the seven churches. Amen. Because they are a prophetic warning in these end times. Yes, Lord. Now, we already talked about Ephesus, and we talked about Smyrna on Sunday. In fact, let's read that again in Revelation uh, chapter 2. And honey, go ahead and read verse uh, 8. Verse eight, and the angel of the Lord and the angel of the church of Smyrna write, these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. So this right here, this is Jesus talking. Look in your Bible. The words are in red. This is Jesus. 
He's talking to the church of Smyrna. Mm -hmm. The church of Smyrna represents the persecuted church. And the persecuted church is under countries or governments mm -hmm. that have uh, a regime where they outlaw Christ. Mm -hmm. They outlaw Christianity. Mm -hmm. And so this, this Smyrna was an actual church in Asia, just mm -hmm. like Ephesus and just like the other seven, the, the, the seven churches. They're all actual churches, but they also represent seven types of churches mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. prophetically. And so if you were to look at a church that identifies or comes in alignment with the church of Smyrna, it's any church that's in the following countries. Um, I don't have an exhaustive list, but China, China has outlawed churches. Do you know that they have to have churches underground? They have to have them in their, 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 their houses. They have to have them privately. They have to have them undercover. So that's a persecuted church. Mm -hmm. They will drag you off to prison. They will persecute you. Mm -hmm. They kill people. Mm -hmm. They kill people. North Korea, Afghanistan, Som Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, Sudan, Antria, Yemen, Iran, India. Mm -hmm. That's the persecuted church. Those people don't have time for unbelief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they have religion. Mm -hmm. Remember that it said those that try to act like they're the people of God, that, that government is ruled by a religion that says they're killing these Christians for God. Wow, wow, wow. They're killing these Christians for their God. In fact, in the name of Jesus, every you, Jesus. Christian in these areas, Lord God, thank, thank you, you for strengthening them, them you, and your grace be upon yes, them and you, your Jesus. power be upon them thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name. In Jesus' name. So you should be praying for these Christians daily. Because these Christians right here, they are fighting the good fight of faith where they are trying to have church illegally. Wow, wow, wow. You think this quarantine is bad? Try being in one of those countries where they, they can't even think about trying to have church. Can't own the Bible. They can't own the Bible. Yes. The Bible's being snuck in. I mean. Everything is outlawed. Yeah. See? That really will test whether you believe it in this sure thing or will. not. Sure Glory be to God. Now, wow, wow, in wow. this, in this, let's move on to Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 through 17. So we talked about, about the church of Ephesus. We talked about the church of Smyrna. Now we're going to look at the church of uh, Pergamos. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and read, honey. <clears throat> And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my, faith, was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, mm. who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent. Or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone. And on the stone, a new name written to which no one knows except him who receives it. All right. Okay, let's break this down a little bit. Okay, glory be to God. Did you come for some revelation? Hello, Erica Tucker. God bless you. He says, I know your works. So these people actually believe in the works of Jesus from the power of the Holy Ghost perspective. These, this is a church that actually believes in praying in the Holy Ghost. This is a church that actually believes in laying on hands. They believe in this. Oh, but we got some problems. Mm -hmm. 
And he says, I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, and you did not deny my faith, even in the days which Antipas was my faithful martyr, and who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Mm. All right. Now we're about to get into something. He says, but I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, mm. who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Mm. So let me break that down. What are we talking about here? Okay. All right. If you read this, what is he talking about? He's talking about Balaam teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Okay? Well, let's break this down. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, Joy, hello, hey, Pastor Joy doing? Simmons. God bless you. God bless you. We don't have time to read all of this, but where this is found is Numbers chapter 22 yes. through 24. Yes, yes, yes. So chapter 22, chapter 23, chapter 24. Yes. But I'm going to give you a synopsis of what happens. Yes. Balak was the king over the Moabites. He was the king. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel, they dwelt near Moab. Now they're trying to take over their region and take over there. And Balak feared the children of Israel. He said, man, there's so many people. He said, they're going to take over us. Mm -hmm. So Balak sends for Balaam. Mm. Balaam was a diviner, mm. a soothsayer, mm. a psychic. Mm. So he sends to Balaam, by the way, the gifts and talents are without repentance. You can, you can be a seer and, and, and you were born with that gift mm -hmm. and you can use it for your personal gain in the world and mm -hmm. call it psychic. Mm -hmm. All that is, is God gave you the gift of prophecy. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. You're a seer. So Balaam is a seer, but he's a diviner. He's working on witchcraft. He's yeah. working it from a, for Satan. he's working it for Satan. Yeah. So Balak goes and calls for Balaam and he says, send me this diviner ba Balaam and I want Balaam to curse God's people and I will pay you to curse them. I'll give you this stuff. I'll, get, I'll, I'll pay you to curse God's people. So Balaam hears from God a warning not to go. God appears to Balaam and says, you better not do this. And so God gives Balaam contingencies on going to meet with Balak. God says, listen, if they call for you, I'll allow you to go. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to put your, I'm going to put the word in your mouth. Mm -hmm. But you can only go if they call for you this time. It was a second time. Mm -hmm. But Balaam disobeyed God and went anyways. Mm -hmm. So he's on his donkey and he's going down this path and the donkey stops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so now all of a sudden, Balaam starts to hit the donkey. Why aren't you going? Why aren't you going? Start to hit the donkey. Well, the problem is, is that Balaam, he didn't know that God had opened the eyes of his donkey to see the angel of the Lord standing in the way of the path. So the donkey stopped. He sees this huge old angel standing in the way. And so Balaam doesn't know it. He's trying, he's hitting. And so God opens the mouth of Balaam's donkey. So the donkey, it's a she, by the way. The donkey says, she said to Balaam, why are you hitting me? <laughs> and Balaam does not flinch. He starts to talk to the donkey. He said, because you ain't going. What is your problem? The donkey said, listen, how long I've been your donkey? In all the years that I've been your donkey, have I ever disobeyed you? Have I done anything wrong? Balaam said, wow. no, you ain't did nothing wrong. <laughs> he said, but man, what, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? He said, can't you see that this angel of the Lord is standing right here? I can't get by. 
Wow, wow, wow. Just then, what happens? God opens the eyes of Balaam's, he, he opens Balaam's eyes, and there stands the angel of the Lord. Yeah. Hello, Brenda Sanchez. Hello, Carlos Conception. God, God bless, bless you. you. So what happens? The angel of the Lord said, listen, if it wasn't for your donkey, you'd be dead by now. Wow, wow, wow. Woo! Glory be to wow, God. Wow. He said, I'm going to save you just because your donkey. Wow, you wow, should wow. be thanking your donkey that he stopped. If it wasn't for you, I would have killed you by now. That's wow, what the angel of the Lord says. Wow, wow. So then what happens is the angel of the Lord gives instructions to Balaam. And he says, you better not curse God's people. And you're going to say exactly what I'm telling you to say. So Balaam meets with Balak and says, hey, listen, I cannot curse God. Uh, I can't, what God is blessed. I can't curse what God's blessed. Uh, and, and so he begins to prophesy over Israel. He actually prophesies four prophetic words to the children of Israel. Yeah. He gives four prophetic words. Balak, remember the king over the Moab, Moabites who hired Balaam. Balak is now furious. He said, mm -hmm. I, I paid you to curse God's people mm -hmm. and you, you giving them blessings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. See, you can't be cursed if you're born again because you're walking in the blessing. That's you right. got to believe that. That's right. So Balak is furious. It's like, man, what is your problem? So he said, listen, I cannot say anything but what the word of God says. Hmm. So they conspire and they come up with a plan. Hmm. Balaam figures that if he can't curse God's people, he can distract them. And so Balaam and uh, Balak come up with a distraction. So now we're going to read Numbers 25. Go there, Numbers 25, and we'll show you what this distraction is. Numbers chapter 25, glory be to God. Say I'm getting something out of this. I'm Say getting I'm getting something. something out of this. Numbers 25, it says, Now Israel remained in Acacia, Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry. Oh, man, now the children of Israel are committing harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to sacrifice of their gods. To make, uh, They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods. They said, hey, we have in our own church service. Why don't y'all come? So those people started going to the Moabites witchcraft services. Jesus, Jesus. So the people sacrificed to their gods and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. They said, oh, yeah, you know, we, yeah, yeah. And so what happened is, is Balaam and Balak had this plan that their people would invite the children of God to these witchcraft services that the Moabites were having. Jesus, Jesus. So verse three, so Israel was joined to Baal. Oh, man. Jesus. Now the people of God are joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. There you go. So who was in charge of that? Balaam and Balak. Mm. Balaam and Balak. Balaam said, listen, I can't prophesy nothing evil over them, mm. but we can trick them. If we invite them to be a part, mm. let them come to our sessions. Mm. And let's make it to where it looks and sounds okay. Mm. We don't have time to go into this, but you can find this in Acts chapter 15, 22 through 29, where they sent some apostles to a particular church to warn them of this. They said, don't do this. Don't do this. Mm. So what are they talking about? This Pergamos church, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to get all the way in this camera. Mm. This Pergamos church is the church that allows and turns a blind eye to sexual perversion. Mm -mm. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, Lord. They are, they, they got sexual perverse choir directors, mm. pastors and preachers, musicians. musicians. They turn a blind eye to it. They don't even talk about it. 
They got it all in the church. Yes, homosexuality and all the perversion, everything. Also, this is the church that's got Masonic worship. Some of y'all pastors are Masons. <laughs> they worshiping Baal. Mm. They are worshiping Satan. Mm. I'm going to say it on this video. I said it before. Some of y'all pastors are Masons. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's what Jesus is talking about. Balaam and Balak, how they served other gods. Hmm. And I can go deep into that. Mm -hmm. This is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. see that in Acts. Mm -hmm. Hello, Pastor Sharon Reynolds. God Good bless evening. you. This is churches that get into astrology, mm -hmm. yep. horoscopes, yep. tarot cards. Yep. They will intertwine witchcraft with the Holy Ghost. Kondalini spirits. Yes, Lord. They do all of that stuff. Yes, Lord. Weird, crazy Weird, stuff. Weird, crazy stuff. And they call it the Holy, Holy Ghost. Spirit, come on. Ain't nothing holy about it. No. This is the church of Pergamos, and some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, You yes. know what church I'm talking about right now, yep. and it's the church of Pergamos. Yep. When the, when the presence of the Holy Spirit manifests, the fruit of the Spirit manifests. Uh-huh. Without the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit with it, it's, the, it's a fake. It's a fake. It's a fake. So here's the call to action. Glory be to God. Jesus said, you better repent. Hello, Jeremiah Dumas and Corey Chosen Porter. He says, here's the call of action. Now, I didn't expose this church of Pergamos, and it's on the street corners, it's in your neighborhood, the church. They, they believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, but they got sexual perversion. Yes. They pastors are in sexual perversion. Yes. They got Masonic worshipers. Yes. And they and they they pastors are Masonics and yes, Masons. Lord. Some of y'all go to these churches. Yes. You're involved in the astrology, tarot cards, yes. witchcraft, internet, Kondalini. You yes. can go on and on and yes. on. Glory be to God. Hello, yes. Pastor yes. Burt Guzman, yes. Dr. Rafi Reynolds. Now, why did he say yes. that? He said this, let he who has an ear, do you have an ear? Let he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the, uh, Jesus is talking about the seven churches. Why? Because it's a warning. It's a prophetic message to the body of Christ. Hmm. He says this, what? This is what the consequences. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for revelation? Are you ready? Hmm. If they don't repent, hmm. there's some consequences. Hmm. All right? He said, I will fight against them with my sword mm. in my mouth. Mm. Mm, 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 Jesus will fight against them himself with mm. the word of God. Mm. Oh, now li listen. I, uh, uh, I, get me out of that church. Mm -mm. Get me out. He said, if you don't repent, I will fight against you with the sword in my mouth. Come on now. He said, for those that do repent, I'm going to give you hidden manna. What is that? Revelation of the word of God. And then he also said, I'm going to give you a white stone. Now, mm -hmm. what does that white stone mean? In Greek, in Greece, when they were in court, the jurors would throw a white stone mm -hmm. for those that weren't guilty. Ah! Mm -hmm. If they threw a black stone, it meant that the person on trial was guilty. Jesus is saying, if you don't repent, you won't get that white stone. Jesus. You won't get that white stone. Repent. That has to do with salvation. Yes, yes, yes. Glory be to God. Yes, yes, yes. I told you I was going to give you some revelation tonight. I told you, and I'm going to break it down even further on Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Glory be to God. Remember, tomorrow morning is the men's prayer call, 7 a.m. It's open to the public. Join us 7 a.m., the men's prayer call. I'll have the information on social media to call in, the dial-in information, the men's prayer call. 
There is so much unbelief in the body of yes, Christ. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This coronavirus should have been dead by now. Dead. But too much unbelief. Too much. That's why the souls aren't coming in the body of Christ the way that it should. Because of all the unbelief. I heard the word of the Lord say that people don't, people, people just want things to go back to normal. See? God is, God is wanting revival. We got to pray for revival. Glory be to God. Yeah. All right. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talked about the church of Ephesus, Smyrna, and now Pergamos. On Sunday, we're going to go into Thyatira. I'm going to talk about that Jezebel spirit. Ah! I'm going to talk about that Jezebel spirit. Ah! Glory be to God. This stuff is operating in the body of Christ as we speak. Yes, it is. Right now. Right now. Glory be to God. If you're not born again, you don't Thank know you, Jesus. Jesus. Maybe you're backslidden and you want to make things right. I want to pray with you right now. Thank I want to Jesus. pray with you right now. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray with you right now. Thank you. Lord. If you're not born again, pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving me. Yes, Lord. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Make me whole. Thank you, Jesus. Create in me a clean heart yes, and renew a right spirit in me. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, contact the church. We want to hear from you. We will help disciple you in your journey with walking with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Listen. If you jumped on and you hadn't listened to part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, you want to go back and listen because we built on some stuff. Whoa, we built on some stuff. You want to go back. It's on YouTube. Go back. You want to build on some stuff here. Amen. Like and share this. Send this out. This is the word of God. Like and share, share it. Send it out. This is the word of God. Oh, I just heard the Lord say, pray that the medicine works in Jesus' name. The grace Jesus. of God through medicine works Thank you, Lord. in Jesus' name. God bless you, God men. Bless I, will, you. I will hear from you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Thank you so much for all the likes and shares. God bless you. God bless you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.